Weighing yourself is a typical part of trying to lose weight. Your weight isn't just a number. It's something you can actually feel and see in yourself that's changing. But what does that really mean? How useful is tracking your weight loss progress by using the scale only? Okay, so you want to slim down. But does what does slim down mean on the scale? Can you see the numbers change if you're slimming down on the scale? Does the, does the numbers move? No, this doesn't happen when you're losing body fat while gaining muscle. Your weight can actually stay the same as you lose inches. The problem is that we focus so much on the scale that believing the number and if it doesn't change, you're not actually getting results. We need to know the difference between losing weight and losing body fat and how can you see those changes in yourself, in your progress, and even how you look in the mirror. The average scale only shows you your weight. It doesn't tell you the entire picture. How much weight is your muscle, the fat in your body, or the water that you're retaining? The weight isn't reliable for all the changes that you need to see. Sometimes 10 pounds could be just from eating or drinking or going to the bathroom throughout the day and your body retaining that water. Another reason why your weight could be off the charts because of that extra muscle that your body is gaining. It doesn't even doesn't mean that you're overweight or fat. Knowing your body composition is crucial information for you, for getting the results, for mentally helping you through your journey, and sh ensuring that you understand that even though the number on the scale doesn't move, your body is still making the changes that it needs. Knowing your body composition is crucial information. And also bear in mind that your body loses weight based on how old you are, your, your genetics, and other factors that's beyond your control. Just because you aren't losing your weight in your hips doesn't mean you're not losing the weight somewhere else. It may just be, not be from the place that you want it to be. So in this video, I'm going to take you through steps on how to measure your body yourself. Okay guys, so step one, we're going to choose an outfit where we can see ourselves, right? So if you want to use a sports bra and a shorts, that's great. The next step you want to do is take your before picture. So you want to do a front pose, a side pose, right? When you're doing your side pose, you can bring your arms up. Um, try not to put your arms in the ear because sometimes it stretches your body. Again, you want to make sure your body is straight and you can see everything, right? And then you're going to do a back pose. Just like your front and side pose, you want to do the back pose similar. You want to keep your body straight and relaxed. You can bring your arms up to the side or based on what your trainer wants or maybe you yourself you're looking at, um, you can reposition your hand. But again, try not to stretch your arms up because it changes the shape of your body and you want to see all the wrinkles. This way, when you're losing body fat, you can see the difference in your body shape. I personally like the bra and panty method for taking pictures and these are my favorite poses. This way your clothes isn't hugging and tugging and squeezing your body and you can see your body shape better. Alright, so we're going to start taking our own measurements. Remember to use non-stretchable tape. Make sure the tape is leveled around your body and is parallel to the floor. And when you're using the tape, try not to depress your skin, so don't pull it tightly. Alright, so when you're doing your measurements yourself, it's best if you're using a mirror. This way you can see what you're doing. Right here I'm doing my neck. And if your hair is long or if it's not up in a ponytail, when you're doing it, you want to make sure that you're not grabbing your hair as well when you're doing the neck measurements. Shoulder measurements are generally hard to do by yourself. Most of the time I just skip these. Um, so if, you, if you're going to do your shoulder measurements by yourself, it's best to just go across your body from shoulder to shoulder and try to keep your arm as down as possible. Okay, ladies, this is why we say to wear the same bra when you're doing your 
uh, measurements, especially when it comes on to the bust area, so in your chest. So um, use the same sports bra or, or bikini or whatever and make sure those boobies are nice and tight <laughs> in there. And then you do the same thing. You come around the body. Again, try not to pull on the tape and try to make sure the tape is parallel to the ground and relax your body as you do um, the tape measurement. And sometimes it takes a while to get it right. But once you've been doing it long enough, you'll see that you have good practice and your tape is parallel. All right, so there's two parts of the tummy I like to measure. One is the midsection and one is the waist. So I'm going to clarify for you guys. So the waist is the narrowest part of your body, is usually above your torso. And for me, um, I'm pregnant in this video, so you can't really tell. But usually um, the top of my waist right below my chest is smaller than where my belly button is because of how my body is shaped. So this is where my waist would be above. I would say about two to four inches above the belly button. Then you're going to go to your midsection. Your midsection or your stomach is now um, where your belly button is. And you're going to stand with your feet together. Again, making sure the tape is parallel and you are not pulling it. All right. So now we are going to measure the hips. So when you're measuring your hips, you're measuring the widest part of your hip bone. You're going to stand with your feet together and you do this every time again, making sure it's parallel to the ground. This is why you're using your mirror. This way you can see if your tape is a little bit lopsided or if it's going up. Um, for some people, if you don't have a lot of hip bone, you can measure your glutes. Again, if you're going to do this, do this every time that you do your measurements. This way you know. So if you're going to do the hip bone, as you can see, I have a little bit of hips and they protrude. And if you're going to do your glutes, you do your glutes every time for this measurement when it says hips. All right, so moving on to the thigh. So when you're doing the thigh, we're going to do the pinky to thumb method. I'm using my index finger because of um, my hand that I'm using because I broke my finger. So my, <laughs> my pinky doesn't go um, bent that way right now. But just so you can get the general idea and however far your pinky. So the pinky is going to go on the knee. The thumb goes to the upper thigh. Wherever the thumb stops, that's where you're going to place the tape. And you're going to try to measure it around the fullest part of your thigh. Or you could try to measure four inches, four to six inches above your thigh. And then use that as your marker every time. Doing the calf is quick and simple, especially if you have calf like mine, which is already defined. You're just going to get the fullest part of your calf muscle and measure that. All right, so we're going to do the biceps. For the biceps, you can do the pinky to thumb method, similar to what you did to the thigh. You'd put your thumb on top of your shoulder and wherever your pinky stretches out to. Um, and that's where you would go for this. I usually do my right arm. You can do your left arm too and keep track of that. Usually one side is larger than the other. So it's good to know how big um, one side of your body is co in comparison to the other side. And this is what's great about unilateral training because it helps improve that. And now we're going to measure the forearm. And for the uh, forearm, you just want to measure below your elbows around the fullest part of that. <laughs> 